Welcome back to Bexhill West and today we're going to start our computer aided design series for model makers. Hi, I'm James. Now over the last few weeks I've shown lots of examples of how I've used computer aided design to help me work through some of the problems I've experienced with my model making. And if you've seen some of my previous videos you'll see that I've been working on recreating in miniature all of the buildings from the Bexhill West station. However, today we're going to start on the CAD series and it's the aim of the series to by the end of it help those who are new to CAD or have very little experience to solve some problems of their own and as we work through the series we'll build the skills we'll look at software and what have you and we'll look at means for outputting the drawings that we create so we'll look at laser cutting and 3d printing and uh, maybe some cnc milling and that sort of thing However, the series is pitched for the beginner, the, the non-expert. So if you are an expert on any of those things, then really these videos aren't for you. Although if you are, I hope you find them interesting and I hope you might be able to engage and support what I'm doing here by throwing your thoughts into the comment section below. Anyway, the basis for the video is going to be based around making a, a model of Bodium Station, which is on the Kenton East Sussex Railway. Now I've chosen this building because it's small, it's simple, we can work through it fairly quickly, but I think it gives us all the opportunities we need for uh, to, to show a beginner uh, some of the skills involved and some of the methodology that I might use when using computer-aided design to produce a, a miniature building. Now we need to be clear about what computer aided design is and probably in our next video we'll look at that in a bit more detail. But let's begin with just having a look at what I've got here. Now what I've got here is a, a kit of parts for the components or some of the components for that station building you've just seen. In fact that building is comprised of two frets like these but the real takeaway here is that this is all two-dimensional work. It's cut out of flat material uh, and all we're focusing on is two-dimensional geometry. Now later on we will look at three-dimensional CAD. In fact I'll put a picture on screen of the station in its 3D CAD form. However we'll get onto that a little bit later. I believe that the two-dimensional geometry underpins the ability to create the 3D model and that really we ought to start with the two-dimensional work first of all. And we'll do so, first of all, by looking at the methodology behind creating a building. We'll think about the materials we're going to use uh, and that sort of thing. And how we might think of those things when we go about creating our 2D drawing. When we're comfortable with the software for 2D work, then we'll start to look at how we take those two-dimensional profiles that we'll create and how we can turn those into three-dimensional models, which are really useful for driving things like 3D printers and computer-controlled milling machines and that sort of thing. Now, I've thought long and hard about this series, and I think there's a couple of rabbit holes that I'm keen to avoid. One of which is to focus on a particular piece of software. The truth is that the people watching this video are probably used to using many many different types of software or maybe none at all and if you've not used any CAD software at all it can be quite bewildering deciding on what software to to purchase or, or get involved with so we'll begin the first few episodes just looking at kind of theory if you like look at basic processes and then once we've got an understanding of the basic processes we're going to use we'll have a look at a selection of different software types some that I would recommend and some that I wouldn't recommend as well and, and why I wouldn't recommend particular pieces of software for doing this kind of architectural model making work. You see some pieces of software are far too complex and you have really no need for either the expense or the additional complexity in learning what some pieces of software have to offer. In fact you will be able to do almost everything you want to do with freely available software that you can just download so we'll have a look at some of those as well. But rather like a music teacher might 
prefer their students to learn a bit of musical theory first of all. I think that's what we will do. Now I'm not a musical teacher but I think that probably if you understand some music theory it makes it much easier to understand some of the processes involved in learning an instrument. In fact if you learn some musical theory it can help you to learn a wide variety of instruments and that's kind of what we're going to do over the first five or six videos in this series. We'll sort of learn some of the theoretical principles and then we'll move on and we'll look at how we can apply those to different pieces of software. One of the things I've realised by looking at computer-aided design tutorials on YouTube is that they can be very popular and very often they're very short videos which is great. You get halfway through a project, get stuck, jump onto YouTube, search for how to draw a circle in AutoCAD or whatever it is you want to find out. Very quickly get your get your answer that you're looking for and then you move on and it's interesting when you look at those videos you see that they have lots and lots of views and relatively few comments. What I'd like to do is to go really slowly and I'd, but I'd like you to comment so I don't want to present a set of tutorials that show you how to solve a problem. What I'd like to do is show you how computer-aided design can be really useful to you in a sort of a holistic sense with the hope that you might engage in the comment section below and talk about problems you might be having or things that you need further thoughts on or even clarification for something I've not explained well and hopefully the comment section could be a place where we could get a bit of a dialogue going between yourselves and me and also between um, amongst the viewers of this channel in the hopes that we can all benefit from what, we've, what we're learning. So what's been my experience with computer-aided design? Well initially when I left school I studied architectural drawing office practice and structural detailing and I basically trained to become an architectural technician using a drawing board, rotaring pens and drafting film, all of which seems very old-fashioned now. And when I finished university I joined a world that all used AutoCAD and so pretty much from then everything I've produced has been done on a, on a computer. Although I, if I'm honest, far prefer drawing things by hand and there's many reasons why and we'll come to those a little bit later. However, one thing that I've learned from using the computer to produce technical drawings is that the skills are exactly the same and that a really good understanding of fundamental geom geometric principles underpins our ability to work quickly and accurately on the computer. So over the first few episodes in this series I'll try to look at very simple architectural drawing practices. We'll look at simple processes, simple geometries, sometimes we may even do it by hand just to affirm the principles that I'm trying to communicate. And then as we get into it and we become more confident, we'll have a look at specific pieces of software and how we'll use exactly the same geometric principles to create the designs that we're after. Now I'm aware that CAD videos in themselves can be a little bit dry. So it's my intention to split the videos into two parts. The first half will look at a technical aspect of CAD and the second half will look at the construction of a miniature diorama based around Bodium Station and based upon the, basically the components that we will be drawing as the series progresses. And it's my hope that the aesthetic quality of constructing the model might be an avenue in to get people to watch the, the rather drier technical stuff. But similarly those who are only interested in the CAD stuff might also have a look at the, the, sort of the how-to aesthetic equality of the model construction and hopefully the two elements within the video will make the video a bit more balanced and hopefully a bit more accessible for more people. But don't worry, those of you who've been following along from the start and over the past few videos have enjoyed seeing my work on Bexhill West and other projects, those videos are still going to carry on. There'll probably be slightly fewer over the next few weeks as we get into the CAD stuff, but certainly my work on those projects will continue. And as and when there's been some progress of some value and worth sharing, then that's exactly what I'll do. So that's why today's video is very short. It really is just an introduction to the series and I wanted to kind of draw a line under the videos that had gone before and set the course for the, for the next few weeks. I hope you'll find it interesting and I hope you stay tuned. So until next time, 
Cheerio, everyone. Bye-bye.